Good afternoon, I'm, uh, sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. Once again, I welcome you all to this invited talk series under NHP CAST training program. Today, we are fortunate to have Dr. S. K. Jha, Professor from Division of Post Harvest Technology, IRI, with us. So, with this brief note, I request my coordinator to please welcome Dr. S. K. Jha, sir, with a flower bird, and Dr. Anil Dahuja, sir, Thank Professor, you. Division of Biochemistry, with a flower bird. Thank you. Now I request Dr. Anil Dahuja sir to please introduce Dr. S.K. Jha sir. Thank you Dr. Ranjan for giving me this uh, duty to introduce the today's speaker Dr. S.K. Jha. So I think I will be the apt person to introduce him because uh, we have very close linkages uh, with the Division of Food Science and Post-Harvest Technology. So whatever bioactive components uh, which we are uh, studying here, so if they need to be developed into the formulations, so we need the help of uh, the people from Food Science and Post-Harvest Technology. And Dr. Jha is the one person which we always trouble if we find any difficulty uh, as far as the development of the various formulations or various other tests uh, required uh, for the development of those formulations. So he is always kind enough to help us. And Dr. Jha is the uh, professor and the principal scientist in the food science and post-harvest technology. Uh, he is the uh, recipient of the best teacher award of IRI. And again, we have some similarity here. In the same year, we got the best teacher award in, I think, 2012. <laughs> and he has 22 years of uh, teaching experience. So not only in teaching, so he has equally good contributions in the research as well. So he has more than 80 research publications in the peer-reviewed journals. And, and the research, it is not only uh, up to the publications. So he has given a few steps ahead, and he has developed certain processing technologies, certain products, uh, which has been commercialized as well. So three uh, uh, processed products and the four machines, because basically he is an engineer. He is a luminous of uh, IIT Kharagpur, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So he is a luminous of IIT Kharagpur and, and got entry into the agriculture research uh, services. And uh, that's why he has the four patents uh, in, uh, as well, apart from the three processing products. And most of the, uh, whenever he develops any products, so because of our close association, we get the opportunity to taste those products as well. <laughs> So this is again a, a good thing about Dr. Jha because he is a, um, a he is a person who believes in the teamwork. So he has close associations in all the departments of the uh, IRI, and uh, he is always ready to render his help to scientists working uh, in the field of uh, uh, say development of the various food products. Because of his uh, great experience, everybody gets benefited. So with these few words. I would uh, request the Dr. Jha to please uh, present today's lecture that is on how to use post-harvest technology and processing for doubling the income of the farmers. I hope it will be beneficial to all of you. And uh, it will be slightly different from uh, what you have been hearing so far because mostly the lectures, they were um, concentrating more on the uh, basic science. But now uh, here is a person with us who will be uh, concentrating more on the uh, the processing aspects. So I request Dr. Jha to please do it. Thank you, Dr. <coughs> Good afternoon to all of you. As Dr. Dahuja said, we are going to have different kind of lecture. Post-harvest technology, we all are aware and we keep listening from technologists to politicians. When our Prime Minister speaks, he also talks about post-harvest technology and what it can play uh, in enhancing, enhancing the income of farmers. That is exactly the topic that has been given to me to speak on today. Uh, post-harvest technology, how to use it for doubling income, or not only doubling, I say, it can be much more than doubling income, 
provided we adopt it. Examples are many. If you look at the products, uh, most of us or most of you may be uh, I mean, uh, addicted to eating potato chips, either in leisure time or uh, any other time. How much is the value addition? 20 times, 25 times is the value addition. Potato uh, is sold at a cost of maybe when it is a high cost priced, it may be 25 to 30 rupees per kg, but when you convert it into chips, it is sold at a rate of 250 to 300. That is value addition that you can achieve through post harvest technology. So I am going to talk uh, something on it because I have to interact with diverse groups. So I had actually that how to present. Mostly I finally I tried that I should try to uh, share my own research experiences. So partly I will introduce some of the burning uh, issues that we look for and then I will come to share my own research experience about products that Dr. Dahuja said we are working on. The source of food, mostly what you see is from uh, plant and animal based sources. And if you look at their self life, means the storability, that varies from few hours to few months. The animal source, more the water, less the life. That is a simple technique, wherever the more water is there, life will be sought. So our strategy is, our research is always towards how can we enhance that life? How can we store, if it is for few hours, how many few hours we can add to it? If it is few months, how many more months can we add to it? If it is few days, how many days we can add to it? So what are the different strategies on that we try to work? I will be, because not diverse uh, animal sources, I will try to restrict to plant sources what we are working here. This uh, you can see here, this is just a statistics of uh, I mean uh, production uh, of this uh, edible crops and uh, horticultural crops. Now we can see earlier we used to grow more edible crops, now we have surpassed and uh, horticultural crops have gone, my production of uh, horticultural crops has gone up. What does it mean and what I am trying to show? Because you might be listening that post harvest loss in different crops is varying to different amounts. In horticultural crops it varies from 20 to 40 percent, in edible crops 10 to 15 percent. That is many times that is projected, these are the loss assessment that we do in post harvest when you produce. So when we produce that percent more you grow that means absolute quantum of loss will also grow. right? So we have to find out strategies because if you look at the loss figure we have around In terms of monetary value, we have several billions of money that we lose because of post harvest loss. And post harvest loss not only means, not only intends to loss of the produce that we have produced, but whatever investment we made in its production that is also lost. So this is a double loss. So therefore, two major issues we talk in the post harvest or post production system. One is how to reduce loss that 15 to 20 percent uh, uh, or 20 to 40 percent loss, how can we reduce and how to enhance value addition? How can we make more money out of money, how out of grain or out of any produce, how much more we can add? Let us see, I will show you the figures. The loss assessment by CFET, this is the most recent study that uh, CFET, the one institute of ICR came out with. 
And uh, you can see here in serials that have, although figures are much lower than the earlier projected figures, but still it is quite high, 4 to 6 percent in serials, pulses 4 to 6.1 percent, oil seed 2.8 to 10 percent, fruits up to 18 percent and vegetables up to 13 percent. And SOCOM has uh, found out that in terms of monetary, monetary value, we are losing 926 billion of rupees equivalent to 14.33 billion dollar. This is the cost, I mean loss figure and this is a cause of concern and for every one of us, be it uh, farmer, be it processor, be it industries, for everyone this is a cause of concern and we all are looking towards it that how can we reduce this. When we talk about lo loss, then loss is not that it occurs at one point, it is post because the material that we produce passes through a long chain. Here I am showing three for top, top to tomato, onion and potato which is being talked a lot. Uh, I mean that is a major uh, attraction it is uh, gaining. Now here you can see there are different stages from harvest to collection to sorting to packaging to transportation to farm level storage to go down or cold storage or to whole cellar storage or retail storage or processing level whenever it is processed. So loss figures are different uh, uh, I mean pro in the whole chain and that then we actually it comes to uh, consumer level and consume. So, in this change before we consume, uh, there are chances of at uh, different stages uh, loss of these commodities. This was about concern about uh, loss and how to reduce loss that technological measures we will uh, look at. Another aspect that I talked about is value addition how much value we can add. So, let us see some of the countries they are adding value to their produce. The some estimates suggest that China adds 23 percent value to its produce, agricultural produce. Philippines adds 45 percent value. UK adds 188 percent value to its produce, but India is adding only 10 percent value to its produce. Why? The major reason is that our processing strategy is mainly concentrated on primary processing. 80 percent of our processing out of total uh, processing, 80 percent of our processing is on primary processing. And we do add value in primary processing, but the value addition is very small and therefore our uh, total value addition is much less than uh, the possibility or the opportunity that we have. So, here exists a opportunity for us. There are some estimates which says or tells us that in India only 3 percent of workforce is employed in this post production system, whereas in some countries this figure is up to 14 percent. So, this suggests that if we increase lot many jobs can be created in this sector. This is the status of Ministry of Food Processing Industry, where the food processing industry has been ranked fifth. Then it employs about 16 lakh people now in the country, which is 19 percent of the total industrial force and it contributes to about 5.5 percent of the GDP. This is the status of Ministry of Food, Pro I mean data of Ministry of Food Processing. Now, I was talking about uh, primary processing. If you look at post harvest technology, the whole post harvest technology can be divided into three parts, primary processing, secondary processing and tertiary processing. What these three means? Primary processing means not changing the structure and I mean shape size of the material that we harvest. Say we harvest wheat from the field. So, wheat will remain wheat, no change in shape and size of the wheat. So, what is change? Change is in terms of cleaning. We clean it 
properly. If we clean, still value addition is there. You can sell it at a higher cost. So, value addition is there, but only marginal. Then sorting, you sort the grain, especially in those commodities where there is a variation in size, say suppose fruits or vegetables, there is lot of size variation, there is lot color variation when you harvest from the uh, tree, plant. So, if you sort it, again you will add value to it, then you pack it, sell it. So, that is primary processing mainly and therefore, we are only and our major processing is primary processing and therefore, we are not adding much value to it. Secondary processing is what? If you convert wheat in simple way, if you say into flour, that becomes secondary processing. Means, you have changed now. Wheat is no more wheat, it is crushed, size reduced, technically we call size reduction or milling. So, that is secondary processing. So, obviously, wheat flour sells at a much higher cost compared to wheat in clean, sorted, packed form. Right? So, we are adding more value. Now, let us see what is tertiary processing. If you convert that flour into other product, say we have pasta, we have noodles, we have bread, we have muffins, we have several bakery products, we have biscuit, all that cost at a much higher cost than the wheat or wheat flour. Right? So, if we go for tertiary processing, we can add much more value to the produce and ultimately everyone in the chain can get benefit of that. Right? But ultimately, whatever we produce to do, whether you go for primary, secondary, tertiary, ultimately what is going to happen to future of that? You are going to consume it. We are going to consume that food. That is a food we are going to consume and therefore, perception, understanding the perception of the consumer, how consumer is going to use. Therefore, just a small perception and consumer that when you eat a food, we are eating through mouth. In mouth, we have a certain characteristics that we try to look at. If we are eating a curd, we have already in mind a perception about a texture of that uh, curd or if we are eating a chips, we have a different perce perception that it must have a cracking sound. If a chips does not have a cracking sound, we would always reject that chips that it is not good. So, what is texture, flavor and eating quality? Each product, each processed product and of course, it is like a ram that our tongue acts as and from the beginning when your mother serves a food to you, your tongue tries to store the taste, the flavor, the texture of that food and when next time, I mean you get adapt to it. So, whenever you get a new food, it is not easy to exactly adapt to that food because that is not, if as you, you have not eaten earlier, you may not have the perception of that food. So, you have to first I mean uh, guide your, train your tongue for that kind of food. So, mouth and then gut, Dr. Dahuda talked a lot about gut when the food goes into gut, the microbiota system, how it is digested, bioavailability is very important. Whatever we eat, we eat protein, whether it is uh, bioavailable or not, it is digested or not is important. If it is not it has just come out of your system. So, gut health is very important and ultimately it provides what? Nutrition to us. Right? So, what kind of right kind of food which controls your weight, which gives you vitality are very important and ultimately while you eat food. So, without food coming going up a sense comes to where you enjoy that food. So, that perception you get in your brain, 
these are some of the technologies conventional and some modified which we adopt in arable crops your cereal pulses oil seeds but we can see that the operations from threshing when we harvest from field first operation is that from you detach that grain from the plant that is threshing so earlier we had technology like beating manually beating against a hard surface or animal and tractor trading in many parts of the country i still when we go around and we find that people do not go for manual beating they put on the road and the vehicles pass through the road and threshing is being done although that is not a scientifically recommended practice but it is happening in the country and it has its own uh, i mean uh, problems associated with this, those kind of threshing the improved technology now we have is mechanical threshing system and lots of threshers have been developed and are under i mean modification uh, improvement in those threshers so that because thresher when you say what we do that we employ a mechanical force when you employ mechanical force food get a wound no they all are living organism we must treat them with that context when we get a cut we put some antiseptic and we try to isn't it if not it will create problem for us so same treatment as a technologist we have to give to our grains to our fruits and vegetables what we grow because that is i mean that determines its self life secondary then when you have next is cleaning so cleaning now number of machines are used uh, winnowing is one of the technique earlier you might be saying that manual winnowing be was being done against the wind air speed right wind flow now we have mechanical winnowers operating on solar system or uh, i mean uh, uh, electrical system we have different cleaning machines then drying is again a very important especially if you talk about rice rice when you send it to milling lot of rice breaks when rice breaks what who loses millers lose farmers lose because head rice only gets maximum price in the market right so drying is very important dry how to dry and all for this kind of produce we are still going for drying in the yard in the sun, using sun energy now we have lots of uh, solar dryers and heated air dryers we can use storage earlier we used to have lot of traditional storage structure from different material it could be of earthen uh, or it could be mud bins or bag storage now we have metallic bins we have uh, silos of very high capacity of bulk uh, for bulk uh, i mean storage of material milling milling has got a lot of transformation because earlier we used to have hand or foot pounding or rice hullers at best we used to have but now we have no all modern rice mill or dal mill or flour mill oil mill solvent extraction of oil these all are available for at our uh, i mean uh, for use then by product utilization we used to have less of technology for this purpose but we are talking a lot about it by product is no more talked as a by product it is talked as a major product it is a i mean uh, how you can use it for making or achieving higher profit profitability so for everything now you are trying like one of the example is solvent extraction of rice bran rice bran has a problem when you mill in the rice what you are talking about or azinol right is it it is in the outer layers it is outer layers which we remove removing again 
is beneficial in certain terms. If you cook the whole brown rice, cooking quality is very poor. It takes long time and then whole grain will stick with each other, which we are not, which we do not like for eating purpose. Therefore, we go for and as a result, when we go for polishing, we have bran and bran is rich in oil and we have a another industry by the side of rice mill, there is a requirement of another industry because a lot of bran is coming out that is rich in oil. So, through solvent extraction and that way for each industry, whenever we are going for secondary processing or for, uh, uh, there onwards, we get uh, byproducts. How to use those byproducts are again a concern and to be addressed by scientific community. This is uh, the post harvest operation that are required in the fruits and vegetables. What we can see here, harvest, we harvest, then there are different techniques for harvesting and of course, we are going towards that during harvesting, it should not fall on the ground again because it will uh, get injury, mechanical injury and its uh, life will be badly I mean uh, affected. Followed by packing, then transport from the field, then packing said operation where we give different kind of treatments from uh, treatment, pre-cooling, washing, drying, sorting, packing, labeling, palletization. These are the treatments that we give in case of uh, fruits and vegetables. Then storage, we can store it for longer period of time. So, definitely because for storage purpose, two very requirements are there. Lower the temperature, longer the life and moisture content is another. So, in fruits and vegetables, high moisture is a requirement. So, you have to maintain in storage high humidity, but in case of edible crops, you have to ensure that humidity level is as low, sort of longer will be the life of the produce. So, these are the operations that we do. So, therefore, here we are not talking about secondary or tertiary processing, it is only primary processing, right. If we are going for secondary or tertiary, so now we have to go for size reduction. Suppose you make a slice, you uh, make a pulp from the fruit, that will become secondary processing. Now, a little bit about nutrition part these because we all these commodities we talk about they are meant for nutrition for well being for human health we have different types of grains and it has been found and reported that many phytochemicals present in grains because phytochemicals the fruits and vegetable sources are well proven that they have lot of phytochemicals, but even there are reports that some phytonutrients which are present in fruit, uh, grains are not present in fruits and vegetables. And another important issue is in grains, most of these are present in outer layers, not in the inside layers outer core, say we talk about rice, we remove the outer core, all the vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, they are present in outer layers, but we remove during milling. So, as a consumption, what we are consuming? The milled rice that we are consuming do not have those nutrients, we remove those nutrients. So, mainly we consume is starch. Wheat milling, earlier in earlier days, we used to grind the whole flour, whole wheat and then used to consume or the chapati made from those flour. Modern flour milling is different. Modern wheat flour milling is different where we remove the 
husk or the bran layer separately, germ separately and then endosperm separately. Again endosperm, the inner white endosperm separate, outer white uh, endosperm where it is mainly attached with bran separately which we technically call patent floor and clear floor. And then they prepare for different industry because for wheat flour milling industry, the clients are of diverse group. They have bakery industry, even in bakery, lot many. Some industry goes for cracker making, some for cookie making, some for biscuit making, some for bread making and requirement of the quality of flour for different industry is different different protein requirement, different ash content requirement. So, then they mix the patent floor and clear floor and then they try to, to supply catering to their requirement. But what we are again what we are doing here, we are removing the bran, where the majority of phytochemicals are present. Now, because of increasing awareness when those millers are packing 5 kg, 10 kg packs and then it got a, I mean from consumer, oh these floors are not good. Then they realized why not good? Because the fiber that we are removing, bran that we are removing, which we used to get in whole wheat floor. So, now the practice, the millers, what they have started doing? the bran they have started adding into those floors. So, that is be because of the uh, consumer requirement and consumer um, uh, demand. So, lot of I mean uh, reports are there that the whole grain, whole grain when we consume then we can have benefits in terms of uh, I mean uh, having immunity from different diseases. Then as I told, I discussed that phytochemicals mostly are present in bran or germ fraction. In whole wheat, it has been reported that the germ fraction contributes 83 percent of total, total phenolic content, 79 percent of flavonoid and 78 percent of jexanthine, 51 percent of lutein. So, therefore, we must try to incorporate even if we separate, we must try to incorporate into certain processed product matrix to get advantage, to get give benefits to the consumer. These are the phytochemicals that are exclusively present, ferulic acid, diferulates in the uh, whole grains and not in the fruits and vegetables. But we also should be aware that these grains also contain anti-nutritional factor. So, I mean, is one uh, very prominently talked about that uh, anti nutritional factor and trypsin inhibitor is present in soybean. And therefore, any processed product from soybean must be looked for presence of anti nutritional factor. If it is present, the whole benefits of having isoflavones or having protein may not, the body may not be able to. Uh, get benefit of those things because there is a I have seen that in uh, young generation who those who are gym goers, uh, gym goers, they have they are recommended that you should go for more protein rich diet. Those who can afford purchase at a cost of three thousand per kg, four thousand per kg, but those who do not have, they they look for soya bean because it has been recommended that. Soya bean has 40 percent soya bean protein. So, anti nutritional factor in processing we must try to reduce uh, to get proper benefit. Well, we have some other challenges when we are dealing with food, then we must also be aware of these challenges. Protein malnutrition is a concern for the whole world and to our country also micronutrient deficiency, especially iron, uh, vitamin A and uh, iodine. Iodine has 
been addressed through uh, iodized salt to a greater extent, but micronutrient deficiency is a huge problem. Diabetes is increasing at an alarming late, uh, rate. Obesity is also a, a, a prominent problem. Cancer, gluten allergy, although in our country, uh, percent in terms of percent it is not very high, but absolute number is now alarming that is coming through wheat, wheat gluten. So, we have to address these issues while we are dealing with uh, processing as a manufacturer or as a scientific person, we have to take care of these challenges. Uh, if we look future food production and processing trends, then here you can look at that from top bottom to top that agriculture production, what we are looking at agriculture production that improved and faster breeding is one that different tools and techniques are being used, modified agronomic practices, then reduced chemical input. These are major I mean talk that how and what we should look at at production aspect. Then raw material and ingredients we get. So, that we go for processing, packaging and finally, uh, final product that we get. So, what are the, the recent thought or our I mean scientific thought or consumers thought is going on. In processed product, we are looking at now reduced fat that it should not have high fat content, low sugar, low salt, but it should be enriched with what fiber, antioxidant, protective compounds must have low calorific value, satiety enhancing and modified functionality and increased bioavailability. These we are looking for in a processed product in the final product. And also on the right side what we find when we process the waste reduction that least waste should be or byproduct should be generated in during the processing if it is generated, it should be reusable, recycling is possible, waste recovery options, composting, can we compost it as a technology, reduced energy in the whole as, as less possible, we can, we should be able to uh, complete our work with low, at a low uh, energy requirement than its life cycle analysis. These are and at consumer point, what is required? Consumer acceptance. I must be able to, suppose it is a vegetarian mass, India is a pre predominantly vegetarian country. If we try to have more and more meat fish based product, probably it will have a limited acceptability, right. So, consumer acceptance is important in terms of veg, non veg, its texture safe is very, now we have FSSAI in place in the country, Food Safety and Standard Authority of India. Safety has become a very huge concern for the whole entire universe that when we eat something, it should not cause problem to us, to a consumer. So, safety is very important, convenient. We have started looking for when husband and wife both have started working, they have less of time they cannot spend more time in kitchen. So, they want either ready to eat or where you can two minutes noodle type of material, you go and quickly you can cook your food. So, convenience is being sought by the consumer, choice, fair trade, organic. Now, lot of people are earning for this, they are simply writing organic and you pay more for it without ensuring whether it is organic or not, but it is written on the level organic, you pay more for it. So, that kind of concern is going on for consumer animal welfare, origin and provenance and price of course, that it should be available at a lower cost. These are requirements of recent times. Now, I will talk about some of the techniques, I mean I was doing my own research experience how we are looking for nutritional enhancement. These are products before you are the one that has been prepared in our lab. 
one you can see both sides uh, this is snack type of material uh, bajra puff that you see it is based on pearl millet then again pasta it is based on pearl millet then you have a product based on qpm quality protein maize as a breakfast cereal what we have tried to do here is pearl millet all you must be knowing that uh, it has lot of iron isn't it but its color is dark how can we improve its color if you just sell uh, pearl millet flour it may not get good acceptability pearl millet flour has another problem that low shelf life how can we enhance can you recognize it it is a pearl millet product it is not because it is of different color and when we are trying to color no synthetic color all from organic source our turmeric having uh, i mean very good in terms of uh, having it uh, properties to contain what anti microbial activity and has a very natural yellow color which is attractive as well so from that and to play with its nutrition because this kind of product you might be eating as a kurkure brand isn't it from the market the important issues that try, we have tried to resolve through this is you can see that pearl millet based snack where protein you can see it is more than 12% whereas if you look at commercial snack it is only 6% so we have doubled and fat requirement which you are looking for that it should have less fat so what we have done fat you can see that it has only 22% but in commercial product it is 40% so again we have halved that and iron you can see in commercial product it is only 1 mg per 100 g whereas we have been able to because we have used pearl millet as a source so it is more than 5 mg per 100 g so this is nutritional enhancement and then through this we have tried to alleviate all problem dull color of pearl millet presence of anti nutritional factor this because this has been processed at high temperature so anti nutritional factors are also inactivated to a Uh, acceptable level then low shelf life of flour uh, only few days it can but this product you can keep it for 6 to 8 months without any problem no issue then protein quality which is limited by low lysine level so for that we have 40 i mean uh, used here uh, pulses to increase that particular part so protein quality also we have improved then we have in this process we have tried to target 5 to 15 years of age group where this kind of product is more in use and we have taken uh, this icmr guidelines as a research we have taken uh, icmr guidelines for rda which suggest that for this age group you need 40 g iron uh, protein and 16 mg iron and then the bureau of indian standards suggest that supplementary food should only fulfill one third of rda requirement so that has been taken into account and then we also have taken into account the bis code for such product that it suggests that what should be the calorie what should be the ash content what should be the fiber content then what should be the total microbial load so we have tried to look into those things pearl millet based pasta pasta is mainly what you find in the market is wheat based so wheat has its problem in in terms of uh, gluten allergenicity then lack of many macronutrients so we tried to see whether we can make pasta of alone with pearl millet but because it does not have gluten network so binding is poor it can form but when we try to cook it because pasta is not a ready to eat item it has to be cooked so when you cook it lot of loss will take place so how to either we try to put adhesive into it or we try to 
put some gluten into it or whole wheat into it. So, we have to, we have gone for that. We have different kinds of uh, I mean, uh, studies we have made the effect of particle size of flour, then proportion of wheat flour and uh, palmillate, then dye because in extrusion process dye has, plays a very important role. So, different dye designs we have used the, the wall uh, thickness of the dye we have tried, tried to vary and then the effect of whole extrusion process we have tried to study. Here what you see is the effect of particle size we found with pure uh, pearl millet we have used, but when we cooked none of them could survive the test of integrity. They disintegrated during cooking, but even then there was some better in 0 0.406 mm size there was slightly better stability and therefore, we have taken this particle size then we have different integrated proportion what you can see in the bottom and top differences in terms of what color. When Palmillate dominates in the composition, color darkens and they try to crumble when you cook, but when wheat flour is uh, dominant then color is white and they uh, retain the structure. So, up to 50-50 we have seen that you can to some extent you can retain the color, but darkness is more if you want to get benefit of nutrient go for 50-50, if you give more prominence to color then go for 80-20 or 70-30. Then after this we have tried to again incorporate functional ingredients from different sources that is Moringa. Moringa is one of the very uh, I mean talked uh, uh, as for nutritional point of view they are you can see here the iron, zinc, uh, calcium and antioxidant they are a wonderful profile in uh, Moringa. Then use of some uh, waste material mango ripe mango peel we have again tried to remove dry it make powder out of it we have profiled it it has also excellent profile carrot whole pack carrot we have tried to uh, convert into flour then we have characterized and soya, soya as you have again seen it is again for nutritional point of view it has lot many good profiles. So, from all these we have tried to how much we can incorporate into pasta to make it a functional pasta. This is breakfast cereal uh, as a substitute to corn flakes and this is made from corn finger millet finger millet again a very all millets they are known as now called as nutri cereals. So, finger millet and finger millet again darker than your pearl millet. So, we have tried to put whole I mean powder of carrot to make it a functional uh, breakfast cereal because it is very lightweight. So, it keeps on floating at the milk surface. So, you can use it as a breakfast cereal. Uh, we have determined its bowel life. And we have the corn we have used because lot of corn varieties have been developed in the in recent years. So, we have used quality protein maize which is known for better protein quality because of uh, essential amino acid profile. So, we have tried to compare QPM and non QPM based uh, breakfast cereal. Then this you all are aware what is this rice and dal rice and dal, but this is not from the field. We have fabricated into machine through machine through extrusion process. What is the ingredient? Ingredient is rice that breaks fine rice which has no commercial value that you cannot sell in the market. Half of the rice is still sold in the market at reduced cost, but fine rice is not broken sold in the market. So, that fine broken can be reshaped reconstructed into this shape and while you doing because the requirement is you must make a powder and when you have converted into powder now you have the opening you have got a opening to add any color to it add any nutrition to it we can I mean uh, rice has 5 to 6 percent protein we can now add it make it 15 percent 10 percent 12 percent protein into it that is the flexibility that we have and then this can be cooked at a very very small if you have a bowl of water hot water you need not to 
to give it heating. Just put this rice and, and cover it, this rice is cooked and ready for eating purpose. That is advantage. Similarly, pulse you have wherever why protein has uh, soybean has 40 percent, your other protein, other pulses have 20 to 24 percent protein. We can increase it, we can increase other component into it because even protein quality is restricted in cereals or pulses, we can use complementary and we can enhance this protein quality. So, this is again ready to eat popped products, popping two are very common, pop rice or popped corn, popcorn is very widely I mean uh, available in the countryside everywhere you can go and based on place it is a value different. If you go to a cinema hall, the cost is much more, on a roadside it cost is much less. But this popping in cereals is a quality of starch, all grains your nutri cereals or rice, wheat all contain starch, why can't? Now we have started even wheat grains are popped, other grains can be popped. Issue is if you go for popping, popping percent is less in these grains. So, you have to play with nutri I mean uh, scientifically that how can we enhance the popping yield in these. So, we have done some work on this that how can we enhance and we have found and when, while we are doing it, you can see that on right side three ingredients that one is fully bloomed, fully bursted, one partially bursted and small portion is which is does not burst at all. So, that we can call that is simply roasted. So, every ingredient, every can have, everyone, every constituent can have its use we can make use of it and we can segregate it and we can send it and we have seen this kind of product if you pack it properly up to 2 months it remains as a fresh you may not have a feel that it was it has not been cooked right now we also did some studies on in all popcorn you might have seen the breeders are working a lot on pop varieties developing pop varieties of corn to have higher yield here also we try to evaluate, we drew, uh, drew some lines from NVPGR and try to evaluate where whether there is a diversity in popping quality of these grains and we have been able to screen some of them. This is simple roasting, soybean very widely you I mean say and whole grain how can you use yellow soybean, then black soybean and green soybean. These are in different parts of the country, most used is so yellow soybean. So, this has been simple roasting has been done and we find that you can use it as a ready to eat product. It has a self life of more than 6 months. This is corn nut which is from the uh, in, uh, sweet corn, sweet corn if you are using it for uh, fresh grain, you can have you have a uh, very good getting very good value from the market. But if you are not able to sell, if you keep it in store, means after drying you will store, then it squeezes and it has all problems of insects, pests, and there is no use when you cannot grind it. So we have tried to convert it into again whole. It is a ready to eat crunchy snacks. This is one bitter goat. Why I am talking about increasing diabetes? We all know that bitter goat has a very good potential against diabetes. This has been again roasted and its self life we have found that it remains in good condition even up to 2 years of storage. Soya nut sometimes Review of literature gives you a very good background, but sometimes even if without proceed without review and literature, you come out with a good product. So, that happened in this case. We did not go for review of literature because in review of literature later on when we have after developing our own product, we found these kind of soya bean grains, dark grains are being sold as a soya nut. Then we realized what without review of literature we have done, we did a much better work. So, this is a commercial product, we have tried to at 
scientific level, we have tried to measure its texture, its appearance and its anti-nutritional factor that to ensure that it is digestible. This is again a soya product, milk and uh, tofu from this milk. You cannot say ask any person to eat certain product. It is driven by your own preferences. So, soya bean has been converted into another flaked soya bean. So, this is another version of nut whole grain it was there. Now, it has been made into flakes larger surface area and again at it has been developed as a snack. Corn flakes, corn flakes we have a very well I mean what it is a commercial product. Kellogg's is a uh, multinational brand available in it. Do we know what variety they we use? We do not know. Do the, we know how they are making it? We do not know. So, we have tried to go through two different processes. One is through grits, converting grits into flakes and another is making from grits pellets and then pellets to be flaked. So, that is through extrusion process. If we go by extrusion process, we have enormous opportunity to enhance its nutritional aspect, its color aspects and so both have been tried here in our lab. This is one from chickpea, chickpea one variety uh, maybe you, been, you are knowing this is one of the variety that Pusa Green 112 which remains even after uh, maturity it remains green and retaining its greenness when you give it heat treatment it, uh, it is darkened. So, keeping its then these are dehydrated products it is a simple technique you can use make use of sun energy and lot of dehydrated products for commercialization purpose those who are startups who do not cannot afford. So, for them and then some of the fruits and vegetable based product and I will specifically try to mention the technology that is extraction, encapsulation, impregnation and beverage technology. So, lot of work through how can we natural color we can incorporate into the processed product. So, on this we have worked and then finally, uh, one slide just I will try to make use of or try to share with you that enterprise development if anybody these all products one can go for making and establishing a, a processing industry, but issues that are before them investment where from the investment will come the risk bearing ability of the people technical know how then licensing requirement and marketing how to market these products are very important and anyone coming or looking for this must have to look at it very closely and learn the techniques, learn the tools, how to market it, what are the licensing requirements. So, with these few points, thank you so much. So, now this talk is open for discussion. If you have any queries, questions, please come in front and ask. Sir, thank sure. you for your uh, informative presentation. Sir, I want to ask a question about this mulberry leaf, which is having uh, antioxidant property and anti diabetic property. Is there any research going on this leaf or uh, in this crop? In our place, yes, no. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, means? But it can be. It is similar to when we talk about uh, moringa leaf. Yes, sir. We can do it. Because people Similar are, type of. Yes, sir, people are thinking that uh, it is having that uh, anti-diabetic property. Yeah. They are going to uh, going in a direction that that, uh, that of making up tea or some other uh, different products. Uh, so I am asking that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that can be. If uh, I mean, uh, it is a problem that these ingredients are there. The we can have we have the all the technologies that we have talked about can be used. 
encapsulation, if there are some uh, phytonutrients, we can encapsulate it, even again uh, another level of processing we can give to have uh, if it has a stability problem. Thank you. Anybody else? Please come. Thank you very much, sir. It was a very informative talk. Sir, I want to know that you said about investment. So, how a farmer can, I mean, is there a government policies uh, a farmer because their income is very less? So, how he can start a small scale farmer? Not a lot of things have been started at government level also. Ministry of Food Processing at government level, at even at uh, state level, lot of uh, promotional uh, activities are being uh, given by these industries now. So that can be explored. Uh, I, just as an example, I can tell you one uh, very earth, not even earth pass boy uh, from around Jhansi. Uh, he was in my touch and he started actually, you know, uh, he was not at all knowing what to do. The earth not pass, that means you can, mental level you can understand. Uh, through some contacts, uh, he came in touch with me and one day I was showing through, taking him through my lab and I was showing all extrusion and this thing. When he came to that grinding part, that grinding is one requirement for extrusion. So when I was showing that this can also be a business. He said, sir, I have got my business. Let us go back to your room. He came back to my room. He said, I don't want to see anything because that is a very small machine that can cost maybe around 20,000 rupees. He said, I have got. He went back, but even he had not, I mean, uh, no risk bearing ability or where prompt to manage 20,000. So he was going to banks, etc. No bank was giving because he was not a educated person, he does not, he doesn't have anything. Then from subsidy scheme of state government, he got some grant and he started working on a wheat milling and within six months, he put another oil extraction machine and for last three years, he is, I mean, you, if you, you cannot recognize that boy the kind of change. So, you should have inner urge that I have to be. An entrepreneur has that. We have to, uh, I mean, uh, encourage such kind of people if we come around anytime, anywhere. So, I think, uh, uh, so we'll end here. Uh, later, we can discuss with sir and then uh, you can get your questions answered. Uh, I think you all will agree that this talk was loaded with nutrient and then a lot of excluded products, processed products, soya nuts and all those things. And um, uh, really, I think I enjoyed each and every part of this talk. Especially, sir, uh, has shown different shapes on different aspects of processing, different types of processing, post-harvest losses, and then how best we can use this as an opportunity to establish your own companies. This will be definitely uh, a beneficial, not for us, for all those who are struggling hard to get the job. So this is the right area where they can venture and definitely uh, this uh, uh, nutrient-based food industry. So definitely they have long way to go. So with this brief note, now I request Professor Division of Biochemistry to please felicitate today's speaker. Thank you. It was really mesmerizing talk. Eh? <laughs> you never wanted to end it. Eh? <laughs> of course, you have uh, shortened it down because of the paucity of the time, but a lot of information it is available with him. So he is uh, sitting in the next building only. So you can contact him if there are any other queries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much for giving me this opportunity.